Shepherd's house today. Let's stand together, take your songbook out, turn over to page number 272. Let's sing, Hallelujah, we shall rise. On that resurrection morning, page 272. Sing it now. In the resurrection morning, when the trump of God shall sound, we shall rise, we shall rise. Then the saints will come rejoicing, and tears will ever be found. We shall rise, we shall rise, we shall rise, we shall rise. this morning. Page 296 when Jesus comes in the clouds. Page 296 this morning. Hey man, you're singing good today now. Oh, what a shout will rise across the vaulted sky when Jesus comes in the clouds. We'll leave all pain and fear and in this glory share when Jesus comes Oh! 
Amen. You can be seated. Worship with the choir this morning. Page number four. Sing and let my soul astray. Sing and let my soul astray. I drifted from the straight and narrow way. Let the happiness of life be eternal. Blood to Jesus I did pray. To the Lord I only pray. Every chain of sin. I've been set free by the grace of God. I'm free. Where the saddle pins within. No more the paths of sin I trod. I'm free. Every chain of sin. The path below is trouble. Oh, it's hard to breathe and walk. The sin is loaded, mighty hard to carry. But I left the shifting sand. I have left the shifting sand. Upon the rock, solid rock, I'll take my stand. Praise God, I'm free. Breathe on every chain of sin. The saddle pins within. No more the paths of sin I trod. I'm free. Heaven gates are in the end. The blood has cleansed every sinful stain. I'm free. Praise the living God. I'm free again. Soon the pearly gates I'll see. Soon the pearly gates I'll see in heaven. Soon. And then I'll never die to live forever Friends and loved ones wait for me Friends and loved ones wait for me I'll sail up high through the sky Because I'm free Praise God, I'm free Free from every chain of sin I've been set free by the grace of God I'm free Where the saddle beats within No more than
One day is victory, the next day I'm living with pain. One minute the sun is shining down, then it starts to rain. But I know a touch from God will quiet the thunder. I'll never get over the blood that I'm under. I'll never get over the blood that I'm under. I'll never wonder where I'll spend eternity. I realize what good. that from me I'm living life knowing that heaven is where I will be when he saved my soul no longer in sin did I wonder I'll never get over the blood that I'm under comes down, you go ahead and stand, take your songbook back out. Let's sing page number 313. I have somebody with me to share my heavy load. Page number 313 this morning. I've got somebody with me. Sing it now. Though others should be lonely when all their friends are gone, my Lord is ever standing by my side. A heavy load upon me, and yet I'm pressing on, because I found a Savior, friend, and guide. I have somebody with me to share my heavy load. I feel His presence near me every day. Though trouble overtakes me along life's weary road, I have somebody with me all the way. In bitter toil and sorrow and heartaches not a few, a consolation sweet is mine each day. I'm a going home tomorrow when life on earth is through. I have somebody with me all the way. Sing it now. I have somebody with me to share my heavy load. I feel his presence near me every day. Though trouble overtakes me along life's weary road, I have somebody with me all the way. Amen. If you're glad you saved, say amen. So good to be in God's house, and I'm glad we're in a church where we still have choir singing. Amen. You so you say that often. It's cause I mean it. Amen. I'm glad we still have singing, and uh, I'm glad we're in an old-fashioned, amen, independent, Bible-believing, King James. 
soul winning Baptist church. Amen. We say all that without apology. And we're so thankful you're here with us in the house of God this morning. I do pray for our nursing home ministry this afternoon at Pruitt Healthcare uh, facility and pray for those that be going and laboring there. And also, uh, we hold services at the Walker County State Prison on Thursday. And so remember these. Also, visitation will be this coming Saturday. We had a great crowd uh, for our last visitation, 500 and something doors that was knocked on. And so we thank God for that. Amen. And that'll be coming up this coming Saturday. So do remember that. Also, homecoming will be coming up next Sunday. And the church will be providing the meat and the drinks. And the ladies will be providing the uh, fixings and all the desserts. And so uh, don't forget that next Sunday we'll have Sunday school at 10 o'clock, just like always, 11 o'clock service. And Brother Dwayne Moore will be preaching for us in the 11 o'clock service. And then we'll have a meal over in the fellowship hall. And then we'll come back that night at 6 o'clock. Brother Moore will preach to us again. Amen. And so it's going to be a great day. Invite somebody to come. Hey, we've been having souls saved around here lately. It wouldn't bother me if we had somebody saved for the next 10 weeks. Amen. Or even more. And so it's possible. And so get somebody to come this coming Sunday. Also tonight, Brother Chris Hewitt will be preaching for us. And a pastor, no longer evangelist, but Pastor Chris Hewitt. Y'all pray for him, okay? He's going to really need it. And uh, But uh, uh, he'll be here tonight and come preach kindly a farewell uh, service, and then he'll be, uh, he's already starting this morning at the Ridge Road Baptist Church, but do me much in prayer for him. Choir practice tonight at 5 o'clock, and so let's have a good crowd. We're learning some new songs, and so we want you to be here. A lot of things going on. Be sure and get a church bulletin, but I'm glad I'm in a church where things are going on. Amen? Wasn't that good preaching Wednesday night? Amen. I'm going to tell you, that was a great message Brother Alan Barker brought this past Wednesday night. And if you had to work and wasn't able to be here, uh, then uh, go back and listen to it. I'll tell you, it's all about souls and burden for sinners. And it was just great preaching. I do want to ask you to pray uh, for Sister Sue Strader's brother-in-law who is near death. Remember him in prayer. Also, Sister Patsy Savage who had surgery and Sister Patsy Parker. Let's pray for her. And we want to continue to pray for Brother Sisk and his health that God would continue to touch him. Them. Then also Sister Linda Pike had surgery. And so remember these folks in prayer. I'm glad we're in a church where people pray. Say amen. And so we're going to give this morning to the Lord. And you give as God would have you to give this morning. And I know the Lord will bless you for that. And, uh, you know, we're, we're stressing this year giving more in 24 to our general fund and to our missions. Amen. And that's for the glory of God and for the souls of men. Amen. You say, preacher, why you, why you say that also every Sunday? It's just what the Holy Spirit put on my heart. And that's his business. Amen. And in 25, almost 26 years being here, I don't think I've ever pushed the offerings, uh, hardly any at all. But uh, this year just seems like that's the direction God wants us to go. So who can tell, who knows what God is going to do in the future of our church, amen? So let's give extra uh, for His glory, amen? Let's bow for a word of prayer, and then they're going to sing for us, and you worship with them as they sing this morning. And I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask Brother Doyle Rattery, would you pray for us this morning over this offering? The sun rose that morning on the day of Job's trial. He rose up to serve God as any other day. Bound and determined to live in God's favor, and nothing would stand in his way. Then the messengers came one by one with their stories. In just a few moments, Job lost all he had. Great wealth and riches were the health of his body, and even his children were dead. But he said, The Lord giveth, he taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I've served him before and I'll serve him today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His wife came before him to voice her opinion. She said, You should end it. 
just curse God and die. But Job rose from the ashes. He looked toward the heavens. He brushed back the tears from his eyes. He said, The Lord, Lord giveth, he taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I've served him before and I'll serve him today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When troubles come suddenly, Blessed be the name When storm clouds blow violently Blessed be the name When Satan comes oppressing me Blessed be the name I'll still serve God faithfully Blessed be the name The Lord, the Lord giveth, he taketh away Blessed be the name of the Lord. I've served him before and I'll serve him today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's the truth, isn't it? No matter come what may. We got nothing to go back to. Amen. Serve God till our dying day. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless them, Lord. Yes. Amen. That's right. That still wasn't good enough. Uh, yeah. The sacrifices still wasn't good enough. The way they dressed up wasn't good enough. The way they built the tabernacle wasn't good enough because it's all the works of men. They were doing what God had commanded. I'm thankful there was a day when Jesus Christ That's was right. the precious blood. Yeah. 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 The yeah. Yeah. He was the perfect lamb. Yeah. 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 The atonement was made there on the, on the altar there in heaven. I'm thankful it was good enough when Jesus yeah. 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 That's right. Yes. 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 Thank God. That's right. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right.
Amen. 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 That's right. Yes. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's right. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, Brother Paul. Amen. The Israelites were filled with pride as Goliath started toward them. Compared to man, this giant stood so tall. But David said, my God has led me here to defeat him. So don't compare him to me, let's compare him to God. When compared to God, God everything's small. There's no giant that compares at all to the Holy One who sits upon His throne. So when you come to face the mountain so high, one glimpse of God brings it down to size. Satan will flee. You'll gain victory when you compare it to God. Oh, my friend, do you fear within as your giant marches closer? Do you know within your heart you cannot win? Just have the faith of David sang and sang, My God is bigger, you'll find there's nothing on earth that compares to Him. When compared to God, God everything's small. There's no giant that compares at all to the Holy One who sits upon His throne. So when you come to face the mountain so high, one glimpse of God brings it down to size. Satan will flee. You'll gain victory when you compare it to God. So when you come to face the mountain so high, one glimpse of God brings it down to size. Satan will flee, you'll gain victory when you compare it to God. Oh, my friend, do you fear within as your giant march is closer? Do you know within your heart you cannot win? Just have the faith of David saying and saying, My God is bigger. You'll find there's nothing on earth that compares to Him. When compared to God, God everything's small. There's no giant that compares at all. To the Holy One who sits upon His throne. So when you come to face the mountain so high, one glimpse of God brings it down to size. Satan will flee. You'll gain victory when you compare it to God. So when you come to face the mountain so high, one glimpse of God brings it down to size. Satan will flee, you'll gain victory when you compare it to God. Praise God.
makes me want to shout this morning. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, just look at it through the lens of God. Amen. And it's real small, isn't it? I'll tell you what thrilled my soul about that. I thought about my mind went back to when, my, when our children was growing up. And I want to say this to every parent this morning. The best thing you can do for your children, you train them, you teach them, and you should do every bit of that. I'll tell you the best thing you can do for your children is, is stay on your knees and pray for them. Because I'm going to tell you something. No matter how big the devil may look, if you'll just pray, if you'll spend time in prayer for your children, there's a payday someday. Amen. Amen. And it works, friend. I'm telling you, it'll shield back the forces of hell. And even when they've gone astray, your prayers will go where you cannot go. I'm telling you, in the wee hours of the night and the darkness, when they lay their head on their pillow and there ain't nobody around but them and God in the blackness, your prayers will come to their mind. I believe that. And uh, I'm so thankful this morning that God answers prayer. Amen. I pray for, uh, I know you pray for your children. We pray for ours. And I pray for those grandchildren every day. God save them. Amen. I pray for their salvation. I pray for their service. I pray for their strength. And Lord knows I pray for their safety. Amen. Every one of them is hitting their head into something all the time. And, uh, but I pray, uh, dear God, keep them from sin and Satan. And may they serve you all the days of their life. And I pray for their spouse that they'll marry in the perfect will of God. Amen. And it doesn't take a lot of time to pray. But I'll tell you, prayer works, doesn't it? And uh, you just keep on praying. You may be fighting a battle. Amen. A giant may be in your children's life. But thank God prayer will bring you out on the other side. Amen. I want to preach a few minutes this morning from Psalms chapter 27. Why does feel good in my soul today? I've enjoyed the singing. I've enjoyed the Sunday school hour just being around the saints of God. Amen. Uh, Psalms 27. If you'll stand with us for just a few moments this morning, I want to give you what the Lord laid on my heart yesterday morning uh, from this Psalm. Psalms 27. Notice with me in verse number one. The Bible says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, come up upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fail. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore, while I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy, I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not uh, over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Father, I ask you now to bless the reading of thy word. I pray that you'll speak to our heart and do what only you can do, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I want you to notice with me in the first three verses of this psalm here, I want you to see David's praise in this psalm. Uh, Certainly fear is at the doorstep of David's heart. But in spite of fear, we do not see David fearing, but we see David praising God. Notice David will mention fear three times. He'll mention it twice in verse number one, and then he'll bring it up again in verse number three. But David is not emphasizing fear, but David is praising God. David is emphasizing faith. 
He talks about the Lord in these verses here. And he tells us in this verse or in these verses that David, in spite of what he's facing, in spite of what's surrounding him, David is not operating in fear, but he's operating in faith uh, and he is fully trusting God. Amen. They just sang that song a while ago and I thought about how well it fit this psalm this morning for David is the author of this psalm. And as David is trusting God in these verses, notice in verse number one that he is trusting God to shine upon him. As he said, the Lord is my light uh, and my salvation. He's trusting God to shine his light upon him. I'm glad that we don't have to live in darkness. Amen. He said in Psalms 119 and 105, he said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He said in that same chapter, the entrance of thy word giveth light. Amen. I'm glad that we can walk in the light of his word. Uh, Jesus said some men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But I'm glad the Bible said in 1 John chapter number 1, uh, uh, that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His son cleanseth us from all sin. I'm glad in a dark world and in a dark hour, uh, thank God the light uh, of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God uh, uh, shined unto my soul one day. And for these past 30 something years, uh, I've not been walking in darkness, uh, uh, but thank God I've been walking in light uh, as he shines upon us. Uh, and David is trusting trusting God to shine upon him and he's trusting God to save him. He said the Lord is my light and he said he is my salvation. Amen. I'm going to tell you it's not only our salvation from hell but he's our salvation from Satan. He's our salvation from the pitfalls of this life. He's our salvation from the snares of the wicked. He's our salvation from our own flesh and our own self. I'm talking about he's our daily salvation. He's our eternal salvation. He's the hope of our salvation. He just is. He always has been and he always will be our salvation. Amen. And David is trusting God to shine upon him. And David is trusting God to save him. But look in verse 1 again. He's trusting God to strengthen him. Amen. As he said, the Lord is the strength of my life. He said, whom shall I be afraid? I'm going to tell you, they can't nobody take your life. Uh, God is the strength of our life. Amen. I'm telling you tonight here this morning, uh, in him we find our strength. Amen. The Bible said the joy of the Lord uh, is our strength. Uh, he said the young men shall utterly fall, uh, weak, uh, shall be weak and shall fall, but they that wait upon the Lord, Isaiah 40, shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Uh, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I'm glad, thank God there is strength beyond measure. There is strength beyond ourself. There is spiritual strength. There is eternal strength. There is sovereign strength in the Lord this morning. And my strength is in him. And David is praising God and trusting God to shine upon him, to save him, to strengthen him. And then in verse 2 and 3, he is trusting God to sustain him. He said, when the wicked it, even my enemies, notice this in my foes, uh, look what he said he said when they come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fell, though an host should encamp against me my heart shall not fear, why David, though war though, uh, though should rise against me in this will I be confident, you see David, uh, what we find in these three verses here is that David is living by faith uh, uh, while he is surrounded by enemies. Amen. And I want to preach a few minutes this morning on that thought on living by faith while surrounded by enemies. Now you might be here and say, Brother Gravely, I don't think I have any enemies tonight or this morning. Well, I want to tell you, you've got three enemies. You've got the world, you've got the flesh, and you've got the devil. Amen. And I'll tell you, all three of them are capable of destroying our life tonight or this morning. But can I tell you, we don't have to live in fear. We don't have to operate in fear. Thank God we can live by faith this morning. Amen. Say, so how is that possible? Because just as David was trusting God and confident that God would sustain him, guess what? He's going to do the same for us today. 
You know, as the children of God, we don't have to live on the side of gloom and doom. I know some people, they're always, they're always leaning toward the negative. Life is terrible, things are bad, the world is wicked. I'm gonna tell you something, the world's always been wicked, amen? And as far as this life down here, this world may be terrible. I'll tell you, I'm living the best life I could ever live. And if you're saved, you're living the best life you could ever live. I'm telling you, it's a good hour to be saved. It's a good hour to be alive. God has brought us to the kingdom for such a time as this. And brother, it's not a time to hang our head and get the mully grubs. It's not time to hang our hearts on the willows. I tell you, it's time to rise up and do what David did in these verses and magnify and glorify the God that has rescued us and saved us. It's just good to be saved this morning. Amen. If you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ. I want you to know the best thing that could ever happen to you is for you to get born again today. And we that are saved, we must keep our joy. I see a lot of long, sad faces in churches nowadays. And I think it's because of people that are backslid and, and other things. But I'm going to tell you, as Christians, uh, we're not to be sad. We're to live by faith. Uh, we're to be happy. Uh, uh, we're to be joyful. If we want the world to want what we have, uh, then we've got to show forth uh, uh, the goodness and the glory and the grace of God. Uh, uh, David, the mature Christian, had learned that even though the enemy, he said, may encamp around about me, I may be surrounded by enemies. Uh, uh, David said, my trust uh, is, is anchored uh, and I'm secure in God. Uh, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what happens to America. It doesn't matter what happens in this world. Uh, we know that things are looking up for the child of God. Uh, we know that things may be getting darker down here, but thank God they're getting brighter on the other side. Uh, and the captain of our salvation, he is soon coming. Uh, and lift up your heads uh, and look up. Uh, thank God your redemption uh, is drawing up. Lift up your heads unto the hills. Lift your eyes unto the hills from which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. This, this year is going to get more crazy. You know that? Because it's an election year. There's no telling what's going to happen in this nation. And I can't predict nothing, don't want to predict nothing. Don't care what happens if you want to know the truth in one sense and do care in the other sense. But I want to tell you my eyes are on another horizon this morning. In a day when the church has fallen asleep as a whole, I'll tell you what I want to do in these last days. I want to press on because it won't be long. I want to keep on keeping on, don't you? I'm telling you, these last days, I don't want to roll over and give in. I don't want to backslide on God. I don't want to get cold and indifferent. I don't want to get to a place where I just go through the mechanics of worship. I'm going to tell you, God has been better to me today as much as good to me today as he ever has been in all of my life. I don't deserve anything, but he's blessed me beyond what I would ever deserve. And he's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all glory. And I'll tell you, real maturity comes when you can learn to praise God in the bad times as good as in the good times. A young Christian, and I'm not saying this as an indictment, it's just a fact. A young Christian will allow their testimonies to be determined by their circumstances in life. He said, well, I've been saved for 20 years. I'm not a young Christian. That's yet to be determined. Because God doesn't work on seniority plans. You recognize what I'm preaching right now and if you need to change it, start today. Amen. Young Christians, baby Christians, oftentimes emphasize their circumstances. Where they're at in life determines a lot of how they feel and what they say. You know, that's how a baby is, isn't it? You let a baby get a dirty diaper and it'll let you know it, won't it? Y'all come on now. I mean, you let it, I mean, you let a baby get hungry and let you know it. Circumstances predicts its life. 
Maturity comes. Steady Christians, spirit-filled Christians, mature Christians may be down. They may be discouraged. They may be going through a dark valley. But it'll take another. Uh, it'll take another spirit-filled Christian to discern where they're at because they're not. They're just not one to emphasize uh, uh, the problems that they face in life. So mature Christians, they press on. It doesn't mean they don't feel the same thing that baby Christians feel. It doesn't mean they don't face the same things. Uh, but it means like David, there's a deep settled peace. Uh, they've been this way before. Uh, and through the trials of life, uh, it has taught them uh, to not lean on the circumstances, uh, but to lean on the Christ of those circumstances. Uh, and to not lean on their problems, uh, but to lean on the peace uh, that they find from within. Uh, that's where David is at. Uh, he is surrounded by enemies. Uh, oh, but he's living by faith. Uh, you read the first three verses, uh, and it would almost appear as David didn't have a problem in this world. But David's back is against the wall. David is outnumbered. But David don't have the molly grubs. And David looks up above the circumstances and he glorifies the God of his problems. Amen. In life, I'm careful what I say because I've not been where others have been. But I've seen them mature saints. Go through deep, dark valleys and I would wonder, would they ever praise or shout again? Only to find out that it wasn't after their trial that they praised God, but it was through their trial. That they didn't really make their trial their trial. Are y'all with me this morning? Instead of talking about their trial, you know what they talked about? How good God is. How wonderful God is. Buried a loved one. And if they talked about it, I could not blame them for that. I could understand that. But instead of talking about burying their loved one, they talk about the grace of God that has helped them through burying that loved one. And they begin to magnify the grace rather than the trial. You say, how is that possible? It's Christian maturity. My friend, it's growing in the Lord. It's what the Word of God will do. It gives you that strength that David is talking about. It's that salvation that David is talking about. It's that light that's shining on them in a dark valley. But yet they're finding enough light. They're finding enough substance. They're finding enough grace to not focus on their heartache, but to focus on Him. And that's what real Christian living is. It doesn't mean we don't have problems, but it does mean we don't go through problems by ourselves. It does mean we don't have to walk alone. It does mean somebody will hold our hand and at times will pick us up and carry us when we can't put one foot in front of the other. We have a shepherd that guides us and leads us and gives us joy beyond measure. Hallelujah. What good is a God that's only good when the sun is shining? I'll tell you our God, he's not just good in the sunshine. He's good in the shadows. He's good in the dark places. He's good in the heartaches. He's good in the hilltops. He's good in the valleys. He's good all the time, on time, every time. Hallelujah. That's him to this morning. Matters not where we go or where we trod. God is so faithful. I want to say we see David's praise. Then we see in the rest of this chapter, and I'll not preach at all this morning, we see David's prayer. As he said in verse 4, one thing have I desired of the Lord. David, when you're surrounded by all these enemies, you've only got one thing, David, you want from God? He said, I sure do. He said, and that will I seek after. David, what are you desiring and seeking after? Notice this, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I'm going to tell you, David, if he'd have lived in 2024, I could have said it like this, David would have been a church man. David loved the house of God. 
David, David couldn't have been a part of a contemporary church. I hate to inform that outfit, but he would have not joined a contemporary, you know, one of those one-name churches where they take your money on Sunday and you don't see them till the next Sunday. David couldn't have been a member of one of those churches. You know why? Because going to church one time a week on Sunday morning and getting ripped off, amen, by the preacher wouldn't have been David's idea of going to church, amen. In fact, David probably would be talking to us today and saying, now listen, uh, we really need to have church more than Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night because there's just one thing I desire and that's a dwell in the house of God uh, all the days of my life. Uh, you see, David didn't have the privilege you and I have. Uh, he couldn't just go in the presence of God uh, like you and I can. Uh, I'm telling you, I wonder what David would do if you turned him loose and let him come to church this morning. Uh, i tell you one thing, we wouldn't be getting out at 12 o'clock, amen. Uh, uh, David, my friend, he'd probably jump up in the middle of a service uh, and start telling of hand and say something like this. I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And then he'd turn around and look at every one of you and say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. He'd say, would y'all help me out just a little bit? Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name. Let's just do it together. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? Somebody said, I don't like a shouting church. Well, I don't know what you're going to do when you get to heaven. Amen. Brother, I tell you, we're going to let the, the glory's going to roll when we get to glory. Amen. And David had a desire. And it was the Lord's house. It was his dwelling in verse number four. It was his desire. It was his deliverance in verse five. You say, David, why do you want to go? To behold the beauty of the Lord, his presence, and to inquire in his temple. David, why is it your deliverance? For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Can I tell you something? I wasn't able to preach it this way, but that's how I'm going to preach it this morning. Uh, I'm telling you church, uh, going to the house of God, uh, it's, been a, it's been a haven. It's been a pavilion. It's been a place of shelter. It's been a refuge uh, in the time of storm. Uh, uh, going to church uh, is what has helped us uh, through the hard times of life. You know, I've heard pastors say down through the years, I've heard some pastors say this, that they took sabbaticals, like 30 days. And I'm not critical of that. There have been times where pastors, I know they, they had to for their family's sake. And in my mind, I thought, I wonder what that would be like to take 30 days. Now don't look, I'm not even looking at you right now. Some of y'all took 30 days anyway. Amen. Some people take 60 days sabbaticals and they pop back in, you know. We have no idea where they've been for the last two months. But I thought, I wonder what that's like to go, because I've, I've never really knew what that was to go 30 days as a pastor, but not the pastor. And I told one pastor, he said, well, I took it. He said, man, it changed my life. I said, well, I'm, I'm, I said, you think I'm going to unhook from, from my church 30 days? I said, there's some people, I wouldn't find them with a search warrant. Amen. And then there's always like, what would happen after 30 days? I know it's not right. I know everything ain't on my shoulders, but, but what, there, what would happen in 30 days? I thought about that. Wouldn't take long, would it? And then we had, we had the pandemic of 2020. And we had those 30 days off. You know what I thought about that? I hate 30 day sabbaticals. And I was like, man, 30 days, no church. I mean, them pastors went to other churches. They didn't lay out 30 days. But I thought 30 days not being at Bible Baptist Church, 30 days of not seeing the saints of God, 30 days, hey, I'm going to tell you the hardest preaching I've ever tried to do in my entire ministry was to come in here and preach to a camera for 30 days. Now, I couldn't be a part of some contemporary church where they got satellite churches all over, you know, the, the regional area, amen. I couldn't join a church and go in and look at a monitor uh, for 35, 40 minutes and see some preacher I never met, shook his hand, don't know anything about. I mean, they're saying, listen, that's what this generation is going to. Uh, but I'm telling you some 30 days uh, of just coming into an empty building, preaching to a camera and sending it 
it out. I know you felt the same way. I didn't like it. You didn't like it. And I'm going to tell you, when we came back to church, I was so glad to be back in the house of God. I thought, man, if it wipes every one of us out, I just want to keep on going to church. Amen? I'm telling you, this is our dwelling place. This is our place of deliverance. David said in verse number six, it was his delight. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle, notice this, sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. I tell you, when you come to church and I come to church, we ought to offer the sacrifice of praise. We ought to offer the sacrifice of joy. I'm telling you, when it's time to sing, we ought to sing. When the man of God gets up to preach, we ought to say amen. We ought to get in there with the preacher. You say, well, you're the preacher. That's right. I'm telling you to get with it. Amen. I'm telling you, friend, we we got an obligation. We got a right. We got a privilege to offer the sacrifice of joy. Amen. Doesn't cost us nothing to say amen. Might cost us everything if we don't. Don't cost nothing to raise a hand. Oh, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, all ye people of the Lord. Psalms 134, but it might cost us everything if we don't. I'm telling you this morning, you don't have to act like me and I don't have to act like you. And I don't think God expects that. But I think we ought to praise God when we come to church. I mean, there's some empty spots right there in that choir. They've been empty for about, uh, uh, probably for about six or seven months. If you got a good voice, if you're, and you're able physically, and you're a member of this church, and let me emphasize this, you're living right. Can I get an amen? amen. Then you ought to fill them spots. And can I make this announcement? Springtime is coming. I always make this announcement in spring, and I always make it on Sunday morning because I don't want to do it Sunday night. Don't peel your clothes off when it starts getting... How many of y'all thank God for warm weather this week? But don't peel your clothes off because it gets warm. Amen. Neck to the bottom of the knee. Can I get an amen right there? I'm overlooking everybody while I say it to see who's mad. Neck to the bottom of the knee. That's, and that's, hey, and guys, I'm not talking to you. That's to the ankles. Isn't that right? You've got to specify that nowadays. Come in here with their little pretty, pretty you know, walking shorts. Bermuda shorts. It's sissy boy generation. Somebody say amen. amen. Lord, I tell you, you got preachers now going to the pulpit. They ain't preachers, okay? But you got hirelings going to the pulpit, amen? They ain't got enough clothes on to water shotgun neither, amen? And they're so tight, amen? You used to have to preach on tight clothes on women. Now you got to preach it on men, amen? And they can't walk. They got to waddle everywhere they go, amen? Because their britches are too tight and their shirt's too tight, amen? Uh, hey, we don't want to see anything you got. Somebody say amen, amen, and amen. I'm talking about got to keep it right. And when I say keep it tight, I'm not talking about your clothes, amen? I'm talking about keeping that standard right. You know why? Because holiness pleases God, amen? I'm going to preach that whether there's a house full or a handful because I don't want that mess coming in our church, amen. I'm not talking about a sinner. They can come any way they want to. You know that. A sinner, we're just glad they're there. We're not worried about their dress. We're worried about their soul, amen. And I tell you, when you become a member of a church, y'all look like you're going to a church and not a ball game, amen. Y'all look like you're going to the church and not the beach. Somebody say amen. I'm telling you, our clothes ought to be modest. They ought to be right. You say, where's that at? It's not in that text, but I'm preaching it anyway because I feel real good about it right now. I'm talking about let's keep Keep it right. Amen. Let's don't drop the standard. Let's don't back up. And while I'm on it, amen, make sure what you got on you can't see through. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm not even a woman, thank God. I got enough sense to know. Women wear slips. Can I get an amen? Don't slip it in on us. Put you a slip on. Can I just say it? We don't want to see your underwear line. Godly men don't want to see that. We don't want to see through your clothes. We don't want no images. Clothes were made to conceal, not reveal. Man, that, that's not in that song, people. I got a dump truck load of liberty right now, and I'm taking every ounce of it. You keep it, you young ladies, you keep them slips. You go stand in front of, I mean, hey, listen, I, I, I live with three women 
at one point. I didn't go in their bathrooms. I didn't go in their bedrooms. Things went on in there I did not even understand and I never wanted to understand. But I'd walk past some bedroom a lot of times and I'd see them in that full length mirror bending over, turning sideways, turning around. I won't show you all the motions. Amen. And at first I thought, what are they doing, exercising? <laughs> then I realized what they was doing. Making sure nothing wasn't showing. Amen. 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 I know it gets quiet, but I'm going to plow that up because I'm going to tell you something. It grieves the Holy Ghost when flesh shows in a church. We don't do the sleeveless. We don't, do the, we don't want to show the flesh. Isn't that right? We want to keep it right. We want to keep it church. We want to keep it... And that shouldn't just be for church. That ought to be every day of your life. See, if it's every day, you don't have to go through all of that on Sunday because that's how you live every day. Can I get an amen right there? But I'm just telling you, it's disgraceful. Not how sinners, but how people that are so-called Christians... The things they wear to church, how tight and how revealing they are. And I've been in church and had to look, could not look at the choir, not here. I don't ever want it here. I've had to look at the floor during choir singing and special singing because I didn't want to look at what was being shown. Now, I'm as much a man as anybody in this room. I'm not telling you, but I'm telling you that's how you, you can get a church in a whole lot of trouble real fast. I didn't know the Holy Spirit wanted me to preach on that this morning. But I'm living by faith while surrounded by enemies. <laughs> and if it offends you, the only re- there's only one reason why this would offend you this morning. Because you're guilty. Our youth choir sang the other night. That's proud of all the young people. When y'all sing here on Wednesday night, I'm proud of you. And I'm, I, I should say thankful. Proud, proud's not a good word. But I appreciate you. Because you're dressing right. And when you get up there to sing, you know, you don't have to worry about how things are. Boy, isn't it a blessing to not have to come to church and worry about that? Because I'm telling you, you can't even go to Walmart anymore. I'm telling you, it's terrible. You go to town, take your family to town and try to do some business and sometimes you have to tell your children look another way. Or you know, it's terrible. You can't even stand. I mean, if I had little kids nowadays and I know that you have to do what you have. If I had little kids nowadays, I don't even know if I'd let them stand in the middle of a cash register aisle between magazine racks. It's so ungodly. I'll tell you what's hottest. Y'all want to know what's hottest? Modest. That's what's hottest. You never win somebody by taking your clothes off. If you do, you won the wrong person. Well, we'll pick that up at another time. How about that? But um, it is important today, ain't it? And I'll tell you why it's so important. When we drop when we drop that standard of dress and we drop that standard of decency and morality in church, I'm gonna tell you what's happened. That's why churches have to go to this fake, fleshly put on of worship. It's because, you, you know, we might get used to seeing what we see, but I promise you, there's a Holy Ghost. He never gets used to that. He'll depart from our sanctuary. I don't want anybody to ever get mad and leave our church. And we've been called Pharisees, legalists, cults, you name it, we've been called it. That church, <laughs> y'all... I invited a guy one time. He said, oh, you go, you go to that church? I said, no, I'm a, I pastor that church. <laughs> We've been called everything, but I think you understand. We love sinners, don't we? I will tell you, if somebody walked in here today, they ain't a one of us sitting here, and I know you well enough to know this. You don't care how people are dressed that are lost. I think you could feel comfortable to bring any sinner to this church, and they're going to be loved all the way to Calvary. And then when they get saved, we're going to give them time to grow, aren't we? We're not interested in just changing the outside immediately. If they got saved, they'll get changed. I remember one time a lady got saved in this church. And uh, she didn't know any better. She came, she got saved on Sunday morning, Sunday night, she went up in the choir. 
She had on a pair of slacks. And we don't do that here. I was so proud of our church. So, so thankful. Nobody in our church made that lady feel anything any less. Amen? She did that a second Sunday. She came and did it the Sunday morning. She did it again. And she did it again Sunday night. And nobody, nobody came up to me and said anything. And I didn't say nothing to her. I just waited for God. And you know that third Sunday when she came in, guess what she had on? She had on a dress. And not one of those mean skirts, you know, that are like right here and real tight. You could flip a quarter on them. Amen. She had on a dress. Everybody treated her the same. She grew in grace. Now, that's, we ain't letting that get in the choir. Can we say amen? But we allowed her to grow in the Lord is what we did, knowing that wasn't going to be a continual thing. I, I'm going to tell you, I didn't mean to preach all that, but I'm not apologizing. I just feel like the Lord, He, he just kindly brought that that way. We started out with sugar, and we ended up with <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But, but I am thankful. I appreciate this church. You've never given me no problem about that. And I thank you for that. And um, this is what I wanted to say in closing. I'd never want to lose anybody over a dress standard. But I'd rather lose somebody, and we have down through the years, I'd rather lose somebody that said, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to dress like that at church no more. I'd rather lose them as to lose the presence of God. Amen. Amen. And to this morning as we stand, I don't even know what to say to you other than just David lived by faith. The Lord's house, the Lord's haven, the Lord's help. You can study that psalm when you go home. David lived by faith. and You and I must live by faith. We must keep things right. We must honor God. And all that we say and that we do. And in a crazy, mixed up, loose living world, church world, we're blessed today. We still got a, a church to come to, a place to dwell, a place to worship God. And, and it's real. And thank God for that. I never want to take this place for granted. And I mean that tonight, this morning. Our heads are bowed, eyes are closed. We're going to sing a verse of this song. If you need to use the altar, you obey God this morning while we sing. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently prayed. But you cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until on the altar is laid. Can you say that this morning? Can you say that? Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Yes. Your heart does the spirit come Have you give God your best? That's right. If you need to come, you obey God. You can only be blessed. Yes. And have peace Bless and I mean, there's others that need to come. As you yield him your body and soul. Yes. Would you walk with the Lord? That's right. In the light of his word and have peace and contentment always. Yes. yes. You must do his sweet will. That's right. To be free from all ill. On the altar, your all you must lay. Amen. Let's sing it, church. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice lay? Your heart does the spirit can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your 
body and soul. Our heads are bowed, eyes are closed just a minute as they play softly. If you need to come, you obey God tonight, this morning. Folks are still praying. We want them to take all the time they need. If you need to come, you just mind God. You may be here and say, Preacher, I don't understand all this. I'm not saved. That's all right. But you could be saved today if you want to. If you want to come to Christ, all you got to do is come. You come now. You step out and come. Somebody meets you in this altar. You say, I don't know if I'd go to heaven if I died today. But you can know. This church loves you. Folks here pray for you. And you could come at any time and get saved. We'll take the Bible show you how to be born again. We want you to be saved. That's the most important things. You know you're going to heaven when this life is over. With all these other things that I've preached, they're secondary to you knowing you're saved this morning. And if you don't know that, I want you to come this morning. You just obey God. We'll wait just a moment. We're in no hurry. We want folks to take as much time as they need to, but we want you to come if you don't know Christ this morning. If you don't know Him, Amen. All God's people said, thank you so much for being in the service with us this morning. Do hope you'll come back and be in the service with us tonight. Don't forget choir practice at 5 o'clock, and we look forward to seeing you in the house of God. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Then after we pray, turn around and shake hands with somebody. Amen. Brother Danny Allen, would you dismiss his brother in prayer?